Okay, welcome everybody to the Snow West Show. This is uh, this is gonna be this episode is loaded. Like like uh, I'm probably more excited for this episode than I've been for any that we've done so far, and that's because uh, we're testing sleds, and I love talking about testing sleds. Uh, we rode uh, the the 2024 M600 Arctic Cat Catalyst yesterday. Now this was our first test ride. A couple of guys have been out. On these things, uh, before we've had an opportunity, they did a ride in Minnesota, uh, and then they've had a few of their ambassadors out on them, but uh, we finally got our chance to jump on the catalyst yesterday, and the snow, the the snow was phenomenal. I'm going to say the snow was very good for testing. It was, man, it was cold. It was on the cold side for sure, but it was a good, good uh, day, good environment, and good terrain for testing this thing. So we're going to get into that. Um, I'll introduce everybody we've got here, but first, uh, I want to say thanks to Pure Adrenaline Motorsports for sponsoring this episode. Uh, uh, and it, again, it's I can feel it in the internet. It's going to be a it's going to be a good episode. I think this is going to go crazy. But anyway, uh, Pure Adrenaline Motorsports they've been uh, they got a full line of snowmobile outerwear. They've got the the Rise one piece mono suit. Uh, they've got the drop one piece mono suit, uh, zone goggles, which is their, their ones with the magnetic lens. Uh, they've got the hero heated goggle. Those worked fantastic last week. You've been, you've been riding in those, right? I, I rode in those last week. You liking those? Mm-hmm. Um, boots, jackets, pants, gloves. Uh, they've got moto gear. You, you haven't been in that yet, but man, it's, we're a couple of months from summer and it's time to get the bikes back out here pretty quick. So, uh, pure adrenaline motorsports, uh, motorsports has moto gear, uh, all the sled gear you need. Um, I've been riding the, in the rise mono. I just got one last week. Um, the, I like the fit of it. It's like a really slim, um, minimalist fit, I would say in that mono suit. Like a lot of the, a lot of the monos that I wear are, are so bulky and baggy. Like they've got so much extra material. They're just granted. They're kind of comfortable, but you're, everything's bunching up. And when you put a backpack on, you're like folding layers of clothing over and that that rise from pure adrenaline, it's it's just very minimalist. I like it. Yeah, I'm super I'm super impressed with the with the fit of these of these mono suits. I started riding in them last year, and uh, the fit I'm staying dry. And yeah, like you said, I'm not it's not all bul- bunched up. Oh, and the price too, <laughs> yeah, man. Yeah. It's tough to beat the price. That's that's what's impressive about it. It's a it's a six hundred dollar mono, you know, waterproof like you said. Uh, they're not insulated. You know, I don't I don't wear anything insulated out here anymore. Days like yesterday, though, I'm I'm digging through looking for insulated crap, like wishing yeah, I had it. But it was a little cold. You know, you start out the morning at, at ten below, uh, but you do what, you do what you can do. Um, and then the throttle gloves, you have a set of those too. Yep. Yep. So what what do you think of those? Uh, I I like them. Uh, there's just a couple features that are, are, don't fit me, you know, just right. The the cuff up here didn't fit me just right. But a lot of people like it. I'm used to more of just the moto style. Uh, you know. Yep. No, no cuff at all. Yeah, I like a real, I like a real thin glove with right, no cuff. Right. Yep. And or or I like a big gauntlet go- glove. But it stayed, uh, it's you know, it stayed warm. My hands stayed warm and they stayed dry. Yeah. So they they got that. But as far as the you know, as far as the small cuff on it, not a huge fan of that. But you know, some people are. So what what's your favorite piece that you got from Pure Adrenaline? Um, I'm gonna have to probably go with uh, I'm gonna have to go with those goggles. Yeah. I rode uh, I rode all day. Uh, and just left them on because I wanted to see how long that battery was going to last. And we, you know, we rode all day last Wednesday, um, you know, put 40 miles on in the mountains. And I, like I said, I just left them on to see if that, how long that battery would last. And it lasted the whole day. Yeah. So, those, those heated goggles are, was, they're, they're taking off. They're I, getting pretty popular. Impressed. Yeah. Okay. So check out Pure Adrenaline Motorsports at pamgear.com, P A M gear.com, or on social media at Pure Adrenaline Moto. Uh, check them out on Instagram, Facebook, uh, YouTube channel. They have they have all sorts of uh, content on social media. So uh, also, I'm going to give uh, Snowist Magazine a plug here. You know, we everything we do, all this testing, uh, ultimately comes out in Snowist Magazine. We we try to get it out quick on the podcast and on social media and, and YouTube. But the the in depth stuff is always uh, good to read in the magazine, and you know, it's nice having magazines kind of laying around and and people can. You know, we were talking to the guys yesterday from Cat and. They love having a magazine around because the, the story never goes away. It's not like Instagram where you, you just scroll past it and you never see it again. But go to snowwest.com, subscribe to the magazine. If you subscribe now, uh, I, w- I would say in the next few weeks, probably before mid, 
mid February, late February, you'll be able to get the March issue of Snow West, which will have all the all the dirt on the 2024 mountain sleds. So go to snowwest.com, sign up for there. While you're there, check out our merchandise too. We have uh, we still have a bunch of hats left uh, from our latest run, and we have a few T-shirts. Uh, check that out, Snow West. All right, on to the show. So we rode, like I said, we rode the 2024 Articat Catalyst yesterday. You didn't. Um, <laughs> Did you introduce who was here today? Oh, I haven't done I that. I don't think you've introduced who was here. No, I haven't got to. Well, I'm just so excited to talk about this sled, though. <laughs> Man, I've been I've been waiting since well the last spring when we first heard about it and saw it, and then uh, heydays when they kind of revealed it to uh, like a million people standing around at heydays. Um, but I've I've been waiting for this moment to get on it and talk about it. But so we have Bruce Curbs. Start with him, uh, Bruce. You. You've been in the industry doing various things. You've uh, you're a certified Polaris mechanic. True. Worked at the dealership. Yep. For quite a while. Yeah. Uh, then you 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 farm. That's your primary thing. Yep. Farmer. Farming. Yep. So you have you have winters. You have lots of time in the winter to yes. go. Yes. A lot of people don't think I do anything go. in the winter. <laughs> well, I, I'm one of those people. <laughs> Which is fine. Um, yeah. But frees up your time to go ride. Yes. We're just we're just jealous. I yeah, mean, we are. No. We are. It's, we're not going to hold anything back. Give you yeah. a hard time, but it's all jealousy. Uh, and then we have Brock Jenna. Brock, uh, we've talked uh, to you before. You you come from the Motorfist days, and uh, you're district sales manager at Motorfist, regional sales manager or re- regional sales rep at Arctic Cat. Yep. All right. Mm-hmm. So uh, you've been around the industry for quite a while, and the, both of you have been on the Snow West test staff with us for a few years, helping us out with, with sled tests when we do our, our deep powder challenge, when we do snow shoot, new model reports, everything, uh, and jumping in now with, with the podcast and, and more of the, the more recent testing. And then Rhett Clark, uh, everybody's friend. <laughs> A.K.A. He, Red Hot. <laughs> I can't go anywhere. I can't go to Heydays with this guy without him. People walking up and giving him a hug and saying, "Hey, Red, what's up?" And I have no idea who these people are. <laughs> they walk through the swap meet. Hey, Red, what's up? <laughs> I worked f- in the industry. And I don't know half the people that Red Clark knows. It, it's yeah. a it, familiar it, face or something. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know what it is. But yeah, everybody knows Red. Red's been uh, Red's been around the longest on the Snow West test staff. Uh, helped us out for a long time, uh, and we go back way back high school days um but anyway okay now now you're happy now can we talk about sled i'm still not happy you didn't, well, you didn't it, ride it so, I wasn't, yeah i wasn't able to ride the <laughs> catalyst yesterday all right so the three of us brock uh didn't get get to go but bruce and rhett and i uh went up to island park uh near west yellowstone yesterday and rode the m600 catalyst we rode it in a couple different configurations um three inch track power claw 154 yep. And two six power claw one fifty four. Yep. So those two were very interesting because the track weight you're talking about a ten pound difference on track weight there. Yeah. The one thing I want to point out right off the bat though is every M six hundred we rode was electric start. Yes. Which was a little weird to me because I'm big on weight, and that's twenty two twenty three pounds of starter components. Yeah. Um, I I was a little. I was a little perplexed at, at why we're we're testing and writing electric start stuff, but I will be, you know, to be fair, it didn't. I didn't feel it. I couldn't feel the weight. No. Did, did it appear that it was the same same electric start that they've had on the on the sleds, you know, for the last twenty years? Pretty uh, to much. A, to a degree, you know, because the the fuel tank is really short, so the battery's not behind the seat. Okay. The, the, the battery's under the hood, and. You know, like Todd Tupper was saying, you could you can replace if you want an electric start sled, you can put a lithium battery and shed some weight shed right off the bat. Weight. Well, the the old batteries used to be behind the seat, you know, so the seat was bigger and bulkier. So if they've got it, you know, up underneath that hood, that's that that's better. Yeah. yeah. No, it's 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 one it's one seat for the mountain stuff and one tank. There's there's not like an electric start version of either. Right. But uh, but anyway, so we we took off. Uh, very cold day. We've said that before. We got into the trees and got got climbing, got into the mountains and, and went into this beautiful drainage. Um, the the Arctic Cat guys test up there and they know all the good secret spots that, that nobody tends to hit. Um, and deep snow. So you you started out on, on a current year M8000, right? Correct. So you went, you went from this year's stuff, current model year, and then got into the mountains and jumped on the catalyst. What, yes. What is your first take? What was the first thing that popped in your head? Uh, just climbing on top of it, the first thing I noticed is the seat was so much slimmer, like narrower. It was easier to step over the sled. Um, 
suspension felt great. Um, it just felt smaller overall. Like the hood, like the whole chassis just felt smaller. Like width, length, everything. Um, <clears throat> just right off the bat, just like it's a completely different sled than the previous year. So it was cool to start on the Alpha the previous year and ride it for, I don't know, how 10 miles. Probably. And then switch and then jump on that sled. And that was the first, you know, first thing I noticed before I started riding was just the size of the sled versus the previous year. Everything was smaller, more compact, and, I don't know, more rider-friendly, I guess. Yeah, it didn't feel, it felt like, felt like that catalyst platform is no bigger than it needs to be anywhere. There's no excess anything. There's no bulk on it. There's no, let's, let's make it look cool. Like, let's make it, let's extend this out and make this aerodynamic and make it look cool. There's none of that. It is just a package wrapped around a motor. And whatever needs to be under the hood, and that's it. Yeah. It was it's very compact and very small. And that's what they, they talked about when they introduced us to it. They said everything that we could find to cut weight or shave down or make smaller or make sit lower in the chassis, they did it. So did they give you guys a did they give you guys a weight? <coughs> no. I know everyone in the industry. Hey, bring your mic in a little closer to your face. There there a little more. A little more. There you go. Is that better? Yeah. Can you hear me now? Well it just gets rid of the echo. Oh, so the question did they give you guys a weight yesterday? I mean, everyone in the industry no. wants to know. No. So we we had we hammered them on weight, right? Yeah. Like we spent a good fifteen t- minutes. Yeah. Like it was re- up. coming back to the weight question <laughs> again, like over and over and over. No, they they wouldn't tell us how much it weighs. They they were kind of vague about. Uh, see, see, earlier in the year, Arctic Cat sent out uh, kind of a press release, and they posted it themselves, and we posted it. We uh, but we said they claimed that it's a ten percent weight reduction. And we just weighed a, a 2023 Mountain Cat 154 three inch, and that thing was 545 pounds, so, full of fuel. Okay. So if you go if you go dry weight and then you take 10 percent off, you're talking 40 some odd pounds. 40 pounds. Yeah. So we we hit the Arctic Cat guys, and, and we had engineers there. We had uh, market. You know, we had the the product strategy uh, lead there. Um, we hit them hard with the weight thing, trying to get an actual figure. Um, the problem I, from what I gather, the problem is, is, is it's a prototype. They're not willing to say, here's where we're at with weight because they're not yet using the components that the final production units will be built with. Fair yeah. enough. They feel the one that will be final will be lighter than the ones that we rode yesterday by a little bit. So, yeah, which is so, understandable. Yeah. And I, I don't <clears throat> want to make excuses for them on the weight thing. Because I want to know how much it weighs. Yeah, we want to know, and, and but I can see where they're coming lighter. from too. If it's if it's a non-production model, they don't want to be throwing they don't want to be throwing weights out mm-hmm. there. So that that makes sense. Yeah, and again, so you go back to to electric start. So the whole the whole concept, and this was the cool thing, like the Catalyst project, which has been in development for what they say like three or four years. I think it was or longer, longer, than, longer than that. Longer I rode that. They've been end. on it for four years. I rode that front end two years ago. Yeah, just before I left Articat. I th- I think they started developing this. Like it's been five, six years where they start working. And, and I, I don't think a lot of people appreciate how long it, it, it takes to develop something. Like when, when we get, like when the factory turbo came out in Skidoo on 2018 and a half. Is that right? 2018? 2020. 2020. 2020, 2020 and a half. The yellow, the yellow and black sled. 2020 and a half. That package, that motor package had been in the works for four years. So people are like, oh, well. You know, like, oh, Polaris saw that turbo and next year came out with their own. No, it takes four or five years to develop that. So uh, what what Articat is doing with the Catalyst and everything that they've developed with the Catalyst has been years in the making. Um, but where was I going with that? Um, they're, they're going back to kind of the roots of the M6, M7 days of our platform for snowmobiles going forward is going to be just low CG, lightweight, compact, function you know and they they did talk a little bit about yesterday and in and at heydays and in other meetings we've had with them that the pro climb the ascender the, the, the pro climb was more trail sled converted to mountain than they wanted it to be and then ascender was the best they could do with pro climb over those 10 years 10 12 years that that, that chassis has been the main platform and you know a lot of people will have this misconception that the 2023 Ascender is the same thing as the 2020 12 Pro Climb. 
looks similar, but yeah, it's it's very different. different. But ultimately, it's it's built around what they started right. with. Right. But uh, yeah, so so they go into Catalyst program, and the whole idea is to come out with this ultra lightweight, compact, mount very sled. very minimalist mount sled, and everything yeah. is mountain. They kept saying, "Yep, the whole this whole project is mountain first. Um, so across the company, which which is cool um, for us us out west for sure. Um, what what did you think of it when you got on it? Um, so I started on it. Um, come across the flats and kind of like Rhett said, you could tell it was, it felt shorter to me. Um, it kind of felt like a race sled, even though I haven't really rode a race sled, but it felt just really short, compact, uh, really playful, um, across them flats, you know, wind drifts and stuff, but it, it felt nice. And then jumping back on to the 23, that's where I'm like, holy cow, I just entered the dinosaur age. <laughs> you know what I mean? It, it, it's crazy what that chassis compared to the old chassis, the difference is. Yeah. All right, all right one folks. Year. All right, folks. Right here. <laughs> this is this is the Arctic Cat guy. That's Bruce Kerbs that just, <laughs> that just said that. I mean, he, yeah, that, he, that's swears, a... he swears by <clears throat> the Arctic Cat and the Alpha chassis. Mm -hmm. And he just said he felt like he hopped back onto a dinosaur. Yeah. That's, that's huge. It is. Yeah, I've been a cat guy for since M7 days. Mm. Love cat. Still love cat. But I've got to like the other brands thanks to, you know, Snow West and letting me be a test pilot. But, yeah, it was. it's crazy. And just the feel, just sitting on it, it just felt bigger, the the 23 versus that new mm. Catalyst. So I'm excited. Yeah, it was. So I, I rode, I got on an M600. I, normally my test program when we go to these releases is I want to be on current model year stuff for the ride to the mountains and establish my baseline. I didn't want to touch a, an ascender. I just wanted right. to jump on the, on the M600. So I, I got on an M600, three inch. So everything was 154. We had a, we had a couple three inches and a, and a, and one two six. Mm -hmm. um, but I, I just jumped right on the three inch and we, we went across, like you were saying, this wind blown meadow, really rough, just wind drifts everywhere. And that was, that was fun. Um, and then we hit the hit the mountains and dropped into this creek drainage and just started climbing and tree riding and man I just once we got some elevation I just left the group and just kind of went crazy for a while and I I don't want to I don't want to make it you know I want to be honest in this review because uh, for one it, it's one day for two it's a prototype and. I, th I think they're still a ways out from pre-production. Like we're in the prototype stage, then you got pre-production, then you got production. I think this next run that's coming out is, is more of the, the pre-production stuff. So a lot can change there. But as I was as I was riding this M600, and we're in like snow that hadn't been touched all year yet, mm -hmm. like a, a nice little honey hole. And, and I was sitting there riding this thing and thinking to myself, honestly, this is the first thing that popped in my mind. This is the most mountain friendly platform I think I've ever been on. Wow. Just nothing about that sled fought me because I, I'm, I'm all about, okay, I'm going to measure a, a mountain snowmobile. Here's my criteria. Low effort to ride. Uh, it's got to get up on top of the snow, not trench. And it's got to do kind of what I'm thinking. I don't want to make it do stuff. It's just kind of, kind of do what I'm thinking. And and that 600 was just that, that M6 was just, it felt, it felt very familiar to like an M7, M8, but with good suspension. And, and I know if we got on an M7, if we went back in time and got on an M7 or, or found a used one, we'd be like, this is a pilot. <laughs> because, because recency bias, you know, you forget how good, you forget how bad the old stuff is yeah. when you may, when you compare it to new stuff. But, man just the the low cg and the weight like like now then the light the light bulb started to click like why are we on electric start sleds when they're heavy i don't feel it like this thing feels so flipping light like i i didn't feel anything unbalanced and uh that's my big issue with the ascender with the 2023 m8000 or all past m8000s everything since 2012 mm -hmm. they've gotten better for sure in the last Three, let's see, it's twenty three. So the last four years, yeah, have been really good sleds. But I'll be honest, it's not a sled I'm taking if I can ride a Polaris or a Skidoo first. No, they're front heavy. They're front heavy. Mm -hmm. They're tippy. They're divey. 
You know, if you're not on the throttle, it violates all of my criteria. You got It's a lot of effort to throw it around. It's a lot of effort to pick your line. If you're on the throttle, it does great. You're just kind of riding that rear axle and, and steering with your feet. But uh, otherwise, I, I just haven't really been a big fan. And it, I, that's no big secret. But I get on this, I get on this uh, catalyst, and man, that is, that is all gone. This does not feel, I want to make the big point, like this does not feel anything like an Articat to me. Would you guys agree with that? Yeah, I agree. <clears throat> and, and I was surprised by that because it's still an alpha rail. It's, yep. an, it's an alpha rear end, but it didn't feel anything like an ascender with an alpha. Well, I think that's their the whole point of compacting everything. You know, the lower, the motor sits lower. You know, they talked about the fuel tank. They've shortened it up, pushed it forward, I think over the jack shaft a little. You know, they've, uh, that was another thing. You know, they got the belt drive. Just everything is almost like Legos, like they've stacked everything on top of each other, I feel like, and everything that the balance point is just on point to me. It's compact and lightweight. Going <clears throat> Once we switched back and forth on sleds, so I got on the Catalyst, rode it for a while, and then switched Bruce back, I didn't want to jump back on the Alpha. No. I told the Cat guys, they're like, what do you think? And I said, I don't want to ride this other one. I want to get back on the Catalyst. Like, you disappeared for a long time. I didn't know if you were stuck or just oh, having I, fun. I had a good sled. I was like, see you guys later. I'm not swapping. <laughs> like, I'm going to be over here. <laughs> uh, so it's it's definitely an upgrade. And, and they said they went back to when they made the M7, you know, low center of gravity and compacting everything. And I think they got away from that on, you know, previous models. Like you said, this one was mountain built specific, and they've done a great job. It just it handles awesome. It's it's easy to ride. That was the biggest thing. I I've spent time on cats when we go do our rides together, and I get off of them and I'm tired. Like my shoulders are tired. And this seems like you said front end heavy. When you're doing things when their weights on the skis, that's a lot more effort to ride them than skidoo or Polaris. So you get on this one and it's it's not like that. It's just easy to ride. Yeah. And I found myself not throwing a leg over the seat keeping both feet on the running boards and just, I don't know, it, it was. Yeah, and so on this on this ride, as we're riding this thing, I, I'm sitting there thinking in my head, okay, I, we have a 650 RMK. A lot of this is just smaller CC engine, less rotating mass. You know, a sled feels lighter with a smaller motor. Right. Take the same platform, put a 600 in it or an 800 or 900 or whatever, and the sled just feels lighter. But a 650 RMK does not feel that way. Like yeah, true. Like it it just doesn't. Like it it it's different than an 850 RMK or a 9R, but it's not that drastically different. Different. This the M6 was nothing like an M M8000. Yeah, in my opinion. And and it it comes down to the 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 total machine balance. I've always felt that that the Ascender was. A cool concept rear end slapped on on a very unbalanced front end. Yes. And the two never really jived. Like, yeah, the back end, the, the power claw track and the, the alpha would go through deep snow really well, but it, it never really felt like, yeah, this machine was built. For the like mountain. Every, every aspect yeah. of this machine was built as a, as a total package. But I feel that way with the M600. Well, and even down the trail, I mean, it wasn't you know, washed out too bad, but there's some pretty good chatter bumps and just being on a cat on an alpha, it's one of the worst sleds down the trail, in my opinion. And I own two of them, you know what I mean? But that M6 felt, and I don't know if that's just being more balanced. So all your weights under you instead of in front of you and your the alpha rail is just hammering on the bumps, you know what I mean? So there's more weight towards the alpha rail, but it felt smoother down the trail. You know, I still think your twin rail is your smoother way to go, but. I, I, we were on rough crap. Like, like going across the wind blowing stuff was, yeah. uh, was rough. The, the trail going in was rough. Your typical single track bumpy goat trail. Yeah. At the bottom of the creek going in. Yeah. I didn't feel any of the alpha negative attributes. Right. I didn't either. And I, I was blown away by that because I, I will typically tell anybody like, what does it feel like to drive, to ride an alpha sled? Well, it feels like a dirt bike with a flat rear tire. That's the best way I can describe it. <laughs> Because the the back end is just doing its own thing, mm -hmm. like it's not predictable. 
Yeah. It just the track kind of follows the terrain and, and it pulls the whole rear end off of whatever bump you're on. But this sled didn't do that. And I, I could hit, I could hit those moguls. You know, we, we would back off and I try to get some separation, then run through the moguls like I would like to, to try to get up on top of them, mm -hmm. which is sketchy as hell on a, on an ascender. <laughs> <laughs> right. Um, Unless you're full bar. Pin. Yeah. Well, full bar with a, with a backup plan, like, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you know, but with an but, escape route <laughs> and granted, this is where, this is where you got to come back to, okay, we're riding a 600. Right. So I'm full bar, but I'm full bar on a 600. So I'm not building speed the way I would on an eight. So keep that in mind. But I, I could hit, I could hit bumps. I could ride a rough trail as fast as I wanted to and felt fine. I didn't, I didn't feel any of the sketch. Yeah. It just, <clears throat> it's smooth. It felt great. You could just hammer through the bumps, and it, we didn't. I didn't spend a lot of time on the rough stuff on the catalyst, but the little bit that I did, it just felt playful. Like Bruce said, like you're on a snowcross sled. So I got down on the creek, and and some of that stuff that's been ridden more, you could almost turn it into jumps, and you're just playing. It's playful. It's way more playful than you know the Alpha previous cats. So, well, and I was following you through the creek on that. I mean, I was on a 165 Alpha. You know, versus the 154, but usually when we ride together, I can, we usually keep up and we're like a dog fight. It was all I could do to not put the alpha into a tree just because of the front heavy and just watching him, it just looked like he was a kangaroo just bouncing through the forest, <laughs> you know, just light as could be. So it's, it's kind of fun to watch other riders ride it and you can tell that it's easier yeah. than, than the alphas. So, so I got on an alpha up there begrudgingly. Because it was everybody <laughs> took the catalyst. We didn't have enough catalyst, right? I don't, I don't like giving up the new stuff, but somebody somebody took it, and I got on an alpha, and I was like, "Okay, get me off this thing." Like I I did a couple loops, did a couple runs just to to compare, and a, as a tester and as a magazine guy, like like doing this for twenty five years, there's been some weird things in the past where. An OEM will have a competitor sled, and they'll bring out. They, they used to. They don't do it anymore, but they used to. Like you would go to these new intros, like like we did, mm -hmm. say say fifteen years ago, and they would have their new stuff, and then they would have one of the competitor sleds, and they ran like turd, and <laughs> they were set up horribly, and it's just like don't don't even like I know what you're doing, like like don't try to skew that even worse. Like I I, I know I'm I'm not stupid. Mm -hmm. So there's part of me that's like, man, did they, did they just like suck up the strap on this front arm and, and make this thing just handle so hard, but rode it long enough. And I'm like, no, this is just how they are. <laughs> like, and again, I'm not the biggest, I'm not the biggest alpha fan or, or a sender fan. I agree. It's a good sled. I agree. It's capable. I agree. It'll go anywhere that the other stuff will go. I've been with guys and I've ridden them into stuff that. I can go wherever I want to go on them. They're just a lot more work. Yeah. Like you were talking about, you get tired on them to me. Uh, they're a lot more effort. I didn't feel that on the M six at all. The, on the M six hundred on the catalyst. Like it was just, just like you were saying, just like, like bouncing around the forest, like a kangaroo. Yeah. Just, it was a plush. It was, yeah. It was a neutral riding position. Like I would say I'm neutral on that. It was neutral on that more than I probably would be normally on any other sled. I didn't feel the need to go wrong foot forward or really jump over hard and throw the weight out. Yeah. Uh, the other thing I felt is on a, on a, on an ascender platform or on a Polaris or on a skidoo, even like skidoo, I can ride a little more neutral than anything else. Um, there's an edge, there's a defined edge and, and to get on edge, like, like take, take a Polaris to get a Polaris on edge. Like you're, you're counter steering to take effort out of it or you're throwing it but you're getting it over the fulcrum, over the tipping point, and getting it on edge. On this uh, catalyst, there's not really an edge. No. It's just like, yeah, I, I can put weight on this foot, and it'll just roll up. And I can put weight on the other foot, and it'll just roll that way. Yeah. And I agree with the alpha. Once you get it, it it'll dump you on your butt. In fact, I think it dumped you <laughs> off a couple times yesterday. I think everything did. <laughs> <laughs> but the 600, you could almost, you got... This, if you want to stay there, or if you want to stay there, or if you want to stay there, versus alpha goes here, and then, mm -hmm. does that make sense? It's yeah. almost like there's different spots you could lock in and just stay there. Yeah, it's just a big sweet spot. Yeah. 
you know, the, the alpha, you've got to, you've got to be an alpha guy. You got to write an alpha for a long time to, to know, okay, this is how much effort, like to feel that it's like tipping right. back in a chair at church. Like you can, you do <laughs> it long enough, so you, you can find <laughs> yeah. that sweet spot, you know, and then somebody slaps you in the shoulder and you're on your, on your plan on your head. <laughs> right. Right. That, that's, that's what's writing, what writing alpha is like. Yeah. But I agree. I didn't feel it on the catalyst. Like no. you could just go anywhere. And if you, and if you went too far into the mountain, you just go right back out. Yeah. Todd Tupper mentioned that before we left, he was talking about that being, you know, a sweet spot that if you get too far on an alpha and it does like you said, and will turn up or buck you off, he said, you just, you know, kind of look the other way or lean the other way. And it's, it's way more balanced. Yeah. You don't have, you don't override it and you, it's just left less effort. Well, and I feel like it, and I, maybe this is a 600 class. I didn't feel like it washed out on the side hill either. Even when you're hitting the deep tracks, you know, somebody else cut across, it seemed to handle them pretty good. And I think that's where the alpha weight problem is, is there's too much and there's not enough in the back. So that's where you're getting the washout because the weight wants to go uphill on an alpha. But I feel like the 600 and like say, maybe if it had a bigger motor in it, maybe you'd get a little more washout, but I felt like it held the hill really well. Even through, well, the, even through the rough terrain. Yeah, and on an alpha, I think you can pan out pretty quick. Like, yes, you can. Like you can that that side panel. It's just, it's a wide machine. Like mm -hmm. there's a lot of material on that thing. Yeah, and it goes back to what we we're talking about the catalyst. Like, you know, when they they put new clutches on these two years ago, and the clutch the the primary clutch is 18 millimeters narrower, mm -hmm. and that that was a design going into catalyst. So hey, we're gonna eventually have narrower bodywork. Let's build a clutch that allows us to suck this in quite a bit. And that allows them on both sides to just pull that plastic. I mean, you get on this thing and you feel like you're on a, you're not on a full size sled. Yeah. Like, did you feel that way or? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. But pretty it, narrow, but it just moves like it, it goes through snow. Yeah. Oh, and, yeah. Did you look at it in the shop? That's one of the first things I looked at before we wrote it is just the stance of the skis and where they're at versus the, the body work, you know, side panels. They sat inside the spindle and the ski. So, like you said, there's no panning out. Like it tips, and you're not dragging the the body in the snow. Yeah, I didn't look at that too close, but it's a good point. Yeah, so you're driving on the ski, so you have control, even when you're like full crank into the mountain. Like, like you're you're on the ski. No. Yeah. How come you're not talking? <laughs> did you get it right, bro? <laughs> I'm just. Sitting, oh yeah, what did you think, I'm bro? I'm just sitting here watching you guys. Like this is like. Three guy, three kids at a candy store. <laughs> they just got it, smiles. It is talking about this. I mean, uh, I, from what I've taken from listening to you guys, one of the best statements came from Ryan. Is you know talking about this, not paneling out, not washing out. Um, it's effortless. His statement of it just goes where you think. Like that's that's really cool. It's effortless and it just goes goes where you where you think. Well, that, like, that, it's that, like it reads your mind. That's what yeah. you want a mountain sled to do, right? right. Like, like you want to be able to go out and ride all day and have energy the whole ride. And if, if your sled is a lot to throw around and takes a lot of upper body strength and, and I probably make the alpha sound worse than it actually is. Yeah, you do. <laughs> Just kidding. You seen him I'm ride an alpha? I mean, I mean, I, I've, I've been on them. I, I've done, obviously we have them in the test. Well, we used to have them in the test fleet. We haven't for the last few years. Articat cut the the test unit program uh, through all this Textron stuff. But we used to have them, and we've had access to them. We had we do get Yamahas. Yeah, so, so we get Yamahas. So we we have them in the fleet. And we ride them. Um, but I, I just got to reiterate there there are no similarities to me in feel. No, I from agree. From catalyst to ascender, like it is not. They are not the same sled. And normally, like, like a Skidoo Gen 4 to Gen 5, like it still feels like a Skidoo. Like it just has that has that same similar feeling. Matrix over Axis. Ma axis over ProRide. It all felt like a Polaris. Yeah. But this thing feels totally different. It's almost like a new brand has entered the world. Yeah. <laughs> in a way. Okay. Well, yeah. And yeah. It, it, it really does seem that way. Yeah. Um, so we, we keep... We keep throwing the caveat out there that, okay, this is a 600. We're riding the 600. The 600 with the three inch power claw. Oh my gosh. That thing went everywhere. Night and day difference between yeah. that and the two six. I feel like. Yeah. The two six is, is not a, it's not the track you want. And no. If you're going to do a lot of trail stuff and you want more of a crossover. Right. Maybe the two six, cause it yeah. did do better on the trail. And it might do good in spring snow. The two six. Yeah. Yeah. You, you guys had the ideal riding conditions for a three inch track. Yesterday. Yeah. Cause that big old storm. So. 
I mean, like you said, the the two six would be good for quite a quite a bit of you know of our, of our riding, but the you know the deep deep snow. Yeah, sounds like that three inch is the way to go. It's it was incredible. funny. I spent a lot of time on the two six, like most of the day, and then it was towards the end of the day. I hadn't even been on the three inch track yet. Bruce pulls up. He's got to. He's like, you got to ride this one. <laughs> so I like that's the one Ryan disappeared with for half the day. So I finally jumped on it. And like you said, it was night and day. I took off up the hill. I'm like, oh, this thing climbs way better. Yeah. Not that the other one didn't climb, but it just, it was way better. It just felt like it got up on the snow better with that three-inch track. And, you know, the front end felt lighter than it already felt. Mm-hmm. It just, it handled great. So I felt like the 2.6 trenched more. You know, when you're getting ready to shoot some photos, I couldn't get up that one hill. I had to poach a track, you know, to get up. But on the three-inch, it it flew up it without pushing a track. It got so. up on the snow. That, yeah. that three-inch track on that sled works. Like, the combination of the, the two, it just mm-hmm. it worked really well. Yeah, there, and there there was no, like, like I'm going to dig in and then I'll get up on the snow. It was just, like, like yeah. right up on top, like, planed out. And, and that goes to their center of gravity and the low approach angle. You know, they had the, they they made a big deal about, you know the ascender platform right now with the alpha has a very low approach angle but that's that's one of its strong points they maintained that on the new sled and didn't they with, raise with the, the spindle is is that right is the spindle uh, higher on the, the yeah catalyst yeah yeah a little so so the front end's out a little bit more but but the the angle still the m has a different spindle than the crossover and the zr yeah so so the m has its own Pre, you know, unique mountain components. Right, right. Um, but uh, th- let's let's talk about the motor for a little bit because I, th- I think there's a couple misconceptions out there. Arctic Cat is coming out with a 600, and I think typically people think, well, if if they're coming out with this new platform in a 600, that must mean that this 600 can run with an 800. And I think that's what a lot of people are trying to base this on. And let's let's be clear as, as best I understand it, and we we've grilled them on it. I've asked them about it before. Um, they are coming out with a 600 in 2024, simply because they don't have their bigger CC motor ready. And yes. They are they are working on a bigger displacement motor, not an 800. They told us yesterday that we could say that. So uh, I don't know if that's that's probably news, but uh, they are working on a, on a newer engine. But given uh, supply chain issues, COVID, uh, staffing, you know, manufacturing plants, uh, the materials that are available, they, they just couldn't do that, couldn't complete that project now. So they went over all their options, right? They could, they could uh, hold off the entire Catalyst platform for one more year. They didn't want to do that because they've been working on this for so long. They want to get it into the market. Uh, they could release Catalyst with the existing c tech 2 800 that's in the current alpha yep uh that was an option but they didn't want to do that because now you have to retool you have to, you have to tool a, a bulkhead and engine mounts and everything for that engine exhaust like every they, they went through mm-hmm. quite a bit of stuff and then you've got to redo it again when the new motor comes out yeah so they didn't want to do that um so what they opted to do was uh release the new platform using uh the the new version of the c tech 2 600 which is basically the the SeaTech 2 600, but with some more refinements. So they released this the SeaTech 2 600 in 2015, 16, somewhere around so. there. Uh, and then they came out with the 800 SeaTech 2 in 2018. So the 800 version had all the updates that the 600 had, plus some new stuff that they'd learned over those next couple of years. So the 800 it was a little more technology uh, technologically advanced, I would say. So now this new version of the of the 600 that's coming out next year in the Catalyst has all of that stuff from the 800 plus even more new stuff. Right. But it's ultimately based on on the the existing 600. Yeah. Uh, it's a different crankshaft, um, different exhaust valve, so it does run better. Yep. It's a it's a strong 600. Something to do with the stator too. They switch something on the stator. Yeah. And then like it's got wires, the new it's yeah. got the new clutching. Um, but it it's a strong running six, but I don't want anybody to think like, oh yeah, they're coming out with a six hundred because it's an eight hundred killer, right? Like, does that sled hang with an eight hundred? I would say yes. In, in most snow conditions, yeah, yeah, 
from, some no but from writing yesterday the the 800 like when i got on the alpha the 800 alpha yeah i could just turn uphill and and do things easier mm-hmm. but the overall ride i would rather be on that catalyst 600 for sure and i would still get you'd get, still get to the same spot wouldn't just be able to t- turn it uphill and pin it but there's not a scenario where i would rather be on the alpha 8 than the catalyst 6 yeah it's a good point <laughs> I mean, would you? I agree. <laughs> I rode that Catalyst for a while, and I told the cat guys, I said, I don't want to ride anything else. Let's just stay on this Catalyst and ride it. I don't care if it's a 600 or, or not, you know. It's, it's fun to ride. I enjoyed riding it, and it didn't wear me out. So, like I said, I mean, it's not an 800. An 800, will, you can turn point straight up a hill, climb a steeper spot. And like you said, you were, we were doing some photos, and you were on the 2.6 the track and had to poach track to get to where we were taking the shot. Um, I think the three inch probably would have yeah. pulled right up that, but mm-hmm. I mean, it's definitely, you know, I'm a bigger guy, so horsepower, I want horsepower. You know what I mean? You want more power to turn up the hill and just, just hammer on the throttle. But riding the catalyst, I mean, it's more fun to, to get to that point if you can't turn straight uphill. You know, let's go around this way and zigzag back and forth up the hill. It's just, way more fun and i don't think there was a huge difference like i think that 600 was pretty close to the eight i agree like not that far off like yeah. like the and and maybe it's lighter maybe it's the platform maybe it's the efficiency maybe there's more per, a higher percentage of power making it to the ground probably all that, that drivetrain everything yeah. you just said combination of everything that 600 is no slouch like it 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 goes yeah so when there is a bigger engine in that platform, I'm going to be impressed. <laughs> yeah, that'll be a fun that'll, sled. Yeah, yeah, that'll, that should, by all counts, be incredible if you do the math. Right. But um, so let's. I was going to say before we rode this, I you know I talked to Dave McClure, and I said, "What do you think of that catalyst?" And he's like, "It's awesome." He's like, "When they get a bigger motor in that thing, he's like, it's going to be unreal." And that was his opinion before we ever mm-hmm. jumped on it ourselves. So. Yeah. You guys yeah. are making me want to go out and, you know, spring maybe, spring guarantee one. Maybe next year. You should. Right? Kind of, it's, it's exciting. <laughs> I've got an alpha for I wonder if I can get a, throw a leg over one. M- Mr. Articat over here is putting his alpha up. <laughs> it's gonna, it's gonna Facebook market. 208. Three, no. <laughs> <laughs> oh, and we'll, we'll have opportunities to write it more. We're going to, we'll have one in March. We'll, we'll have one in the Snow West fleet. I guess uh, we'll get right hopefully we can get on one a couple times yeah we'll ride one at snowshoot and then we'll we'll have one after that but hopefully in february we can get out more you might ride one at snowshoot if ryan lets you get on <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh they bet if, if there's two in the group then yeah you can ride one <laughs> you know there's one thing um being an arctic cat guy that i really liked um cats always had that sloppy steering yeah they talked about that yesterday having the motor lower in the chassis they're able to redesign the steering post, put a U join in, oh. and just make it better, and that's that's actually good that's because that slop in the steering, you know, you lose an inch of steering on each side. I mean, you can you can feel it, and it only gets worse, you know, and with the with the M series. In the previous one, he said it was <coughs> seven pieces between linkages and things. To, yeah, to make the up to the post of the handlebars, and this one was two, two or three, I think. Yeah, so. Yeah, so th- this one has a progressive steering system at the bottom of the yep. vertical post. Versus the other one, they had to go out, make an arm to the next one, and then down. Yeah. So, so, so this this is just you you have your uh, you have your tie rods, and then you have your progressive unit, which is pretty small and compact. And then you have one steering post that comes over the engine. Yep. And then a U joint on that, and then your vertical post. So yep. you got no more arms, no more. Yeah. And and I didn't notice that until you said that. But if I would have gotten on a cat, if this would have mm-hmm. been all alphas, I would have, yeah. Like, you, yeah. Feel, you feel the slop. Yeah. So they've actually improved stuff that they, I guess, didn't have to change, but they still changed to improve on the catalyst. Does that make sense? Like, they've had that issue with that steering for since they brought the Procline chassis out. So it's kind of interesting. It's, it's good that they're still continuing to fix the problems in the old chassis to bring them to the new chassis, if that makes sense. Yeah, and I think a lot of this goes back to 
this cat the catalyst program was basically a blank sheet like let's not take existing components right. let's try to save tooling and use carry over some stuff and mm -hmm. use some old stuff it was like all right blank sheet of paper every component they they talked about the wiring harness they they cut several feet of wires wiring out of the wiring harness shortened that up made made the harness route right next to where it needed to go rather than route it over here and then run another harness to this component and uh trimmed up the tunnel um it, it's a one piece tunnel uh just there, you know you got the composite running boards everything about that was just kind of ground up like okay what what was the best approach to do this rather than let's make this work yeah. here by changing this and trying right. to get it to fit you know, to work I don't know. It was <clears throat> it was fun. You, so, missed, you missed a good ride. So as I'm sitting here, <laughs> so as I'm sitting here going through all the, you know, the paperwork they sent you home with, all the specs, you know, they sent you home with. This is great stuff. I, you know, I'm getting it all right here. Talk about the belt drive. Do you guys like the belt drive? Yeah, and I think that I think that's part of the reason why the six turns that three inch track so well. But that makes you, sense. you just you hear a little zip. You just hear bzzz as you're going. Um, but it's very responsive. And they talked about gearing on this belt drive. Um, I'd have to read a little more on it, but there's, you can gear it, and then they've got the belts to fit. Like, there's no, the, well, there, there's, there's, there's that one, adjustment up there's top, one right? one belt that fits three different gear ratios. That's right. And, and you, then the you, top You do that by shaft. Like turning the top shaft bearing. Yeah, okay. And it, it's an eccentric bearing, so it can be positioned in different. Yeah, which I thought was cool. Yeah. And then the uh, one other question I had was the uh, the running boards. Were yeah, they, I was going to ask you guys about that. What the did composites you... were good, I f but the aluminum. So one of them had the blue one. The blue okay. running boards were the aluminum. Is that the ones the snow was sticking to? Oh my gosh, it was good. Okay, the composite ones would be the. Are they going to have the composite ones on the new? It comes with the... composite boards. <clears throat> okay, but you there's an accessory aluminum board. And the aluminum board, I didn't like. Yeah, it was the snow just stuck. Do so you it. like the one? That I mean, it was it was five below, at the warmest. Yeah, yeah, but I've yeah, I don't know. I was going to ask you guys about that. I didn't like it. Yeah, I didn't like the aluminum one. But the composites was, that it comes with, you liked. Yeah. Oh well, there you go. I think so, unless because I uh, I rode the aluminum one out and it had ice balls everywhere. Um, but the composite for the most part was pretty Kept clean. clean. Yeah, and that was the one with the black boards. Yeah. Yep, you're right. And you can only get the composite in black. So if you want colored boards, you're going to have to go to aluminum. But I wouldn't. Yeah, so they come with a composite on them, and the, the aluminum ones or the painted ones were an accessory. And they said they built those as an easy swap accessory. It's like a, it's like a two bolt, bolt on, bolt off is what it is. Yeah. There's no more cutting. One rivet, and then just fasteners. Yeah. Which is cool. I mean, yeah, it is good. Because cool. a lot of guys, you have to cut your tunnel to mm -hmm. put the old ones on, or the new. Well, we, we've evolved quickly to the point where nobody's my, nobody's really modifying the running boards anymore. Yeah, true. You know, the factory stuff is, is pretty good, uh, just like every other aftermarket accessory. Like mm -hmm. OEM caught up and replaced it with good enough to where right where you you're not you're not taking a sawzall to your brand new sled anymore. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> <laughs> like like we used to, and, and think that was cool. Um, back to the steering though, so that the progressive steering. Um, changes the uh i don't know it, it just makes it it makes it the track straighter like smaller movements and then when you turn full turn which typically only mountain guys do when you're creeping through trees and mm -hmm. counter steering and all that that last little bit of throw turns the skis more so it's a progressive turning rate progressive ratio i guess that's something that goes back to like the tuck or the kirk hibbert days Mm -hmm. I, I guess he was involved in developing that way, way back. Uh, so that that's an upgrade there. Um, you got anything else to say about it? We'll jump into some. No, we need to do some questions. Maybe some questions. more thoughts come. You got anything else? No. I just You're talking about that, you know, going through the trees at, at a slow speed, you know, picking your way, you know, trying to find the next place to jump the creek. You're, there's no effort like before on an alpha. You're, it's, it's force. You're using a lot of strength to turn the. Handbars, there's so much ski pressure. On the sled, it wasn't like that. You just turn it and go. Yeah, just felt easier. Yeah, one no. thing when <clears throat> side healing on the catalyst, um, six hundred stuff maybe. I don't know, but it. I never washed the track. Yeah, like it never washed out. 
Like if, if it, uh, if it got stuck on a side hill or I wound up going up, it's because it, I cut it into the hill and it started climbing. It was never like the back end washed out. Yeah. Which, which was impressive. Um, let's jump into some, uh, some, um, user questions we got here from uh, a post we did on, on snow West Instagram. You can follow us at, at snow West magazine on Instagram. Uh, we posted yesterday, uh, just a quick little video clip from the ride. Uh, just, I was breathing heavy. I was super tired. <laughs> a lot of riding. You just got off the M. Uh, I bet. Oh man. I mean, <laughs> you get on these things, you got you got kind of a short window. So you, you go ride the crap out of it. And, and I had gone over the bars once and I had rolled it over a few times by this point. Anyway, Fun ride. Come out yesterday. You, did you, missed, no. you, you just missed a good one, Rock. You missed a good ride. <laughs> can I? Can I? We leave? Email, can I leave now? We emailed you. Can I There's leave no now response. because you're just ans- you're answering questions that I can't answer. Now. <laughs> okay, so uh, brought to you by Pure Adrenaline Moto. These these here are the uh, the Zone goggles. Uh, awesome goggles. You got you got the cornice boots here with the cable tie system. Uh, Pure Adrenaline Motorsports. Follow them on uh, on social media and check out their website. They got a full line of sledding gear. So we've got some user submitted questions here, uh, and I'm I'm gonna hit you guys with these. Uh, <coughs> do they willy good? Um, <laughs> we'll we'll skip a few of these. Uh, no. <laughs> no. How does it feel compared to an Ascender chassis? Uh, we covered that. I would say we've covered that mm-hmm. one pretty good. Handling compared to the Ascender platform is the three inch on a six hundred. I uh, can't read that one. doesn't make any sense. Uh, <laughs> it works. It works. How much does it weigh? Yeah, we, we covered that. Okay, i got to find some questions we haven't covered yet. Why is there not an 800 or a turbo option? We covered the motor, why there's not an 800. There's not, uh, as far as we know. No turbo talk. No turbo talk. No turbo chatter at this nope. point. But um, I would be surprised if that's not in the development stage at some point. But who knows? Would, who knows? I mean, yeah, I would think I mean, it, there would it'd be, be a few years out. Yeah, for sure. But I would, I would assume they're looking at that. But for 2024, I mean, that's that's all we know. And uh, for 2024, just a 600. It, it's just the 600. That's what you get. Uh, let's see. Is the steering fixed? Because it's sure hard to turn the old chassis. Yes, it is. Okay, you covered that. Hey, Amen. You covered that. Um, does it feel like a cat when riding? We hit that pretty good, right? Yeah. Like, no, it does not. <laughs> you hit it does it not. the new sled. It not feels like cat. a It feels like a cat. This is going to redefine what a cat feels like. No, I it did, it does not feel like an ascender. Okay. Um, what is the biggest difference that makes the snowmobile better than the old model? Now, what is the if you could throw one thing at this? What is what makes the catalyst better? It looks cooler. I didn't get to go ride it, <laughs> but it looks cooler. <laughs> one thing, yeah. One, if you had to say one thing, what is the one thing that makes it better? I mean, chassis. The whole chassis is a combination. The like, whole thing. The overall package. <laughs> I, I feel like the balance point of everything. Yeah. So pretty much that's what Rhett's saying. They've just moved everything to the center, sat it there, and yeah, I yeah. just think the ba- they've got it. There's so much change. I don't know if you can pinpoint one thing that's. I don't think you can. So much better. I mean, it's a combination. Like the whole package is, you know, every part they went over. Andy Beavis talked about that. Every part, you know, he was like, "Let's change it. Let's change it. Let's make it lighter. Let's make it smaller." So. I, yeah, I, I don't think there's one. I don't think there's a, a biggest difference. I would say low CG, but mm-hmm. that's the whole thing. I mean, that's the sum of all the parts, right? Yeah. Um. Can it compete against a 650? Absolutely, for sure. Absolutely, I think I think uh, there's going to be some guys competing with 800s on this thing. Uh, 600, enough power for a six. For yeah. 600, I think it's got plenty of power. Yeah. Oh, well, and Rhett's not a little dude. Rhett's a big guy, big rider, and he said that that it packed him oh, great. Yeah. Well, and it's so pulling a three inch, really cool three inch track too. Through, yeah. I mean, we we're in. Good snow yesterday. It was deep. So. Yeah, it was it was over the hood stuff. It was yeah. you could drop your shoulder and like there was a lot of snow. Yeah. Even like going back to like body size, we rode to Shea Smith. You guys know he's a big dude too. Six like, seven? Yeah, he's a big tall <clears throat> cowboy guy and I watched him come up the hill a few times and you, it looks like you're almost gonna be stuck here to the point of the hill and he'd turn a little bit and just stay on the gas and it just kept going. It just kept tractoring up the hill. 
and he came over and I'm, I was impressed. And he said, these things are, he's like, when you start thinking it's time to turn out, he's like, they just keep chugging and hmm. they'll keep going. Here's a good question. This is from Ether Gren- Granlund on uh, the Instagram. How does the, he says, how does the weight to power? But I think he means, how does the power to weight feel compared to the previous chassis? So we're talking a 600 on a lighter chassis versus the 800 in the other chassis, but power to weight, this thing just blows it out of the water, right? Yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah. I mean, you can definitely tell it's it's not the 800, you know, as far as the, the grunt of the 800, the power. But yeah, with that 600 in that chassis, it still feels better than the 800 in the 23 chassis. Yeah. Said the Arctic Cat guy. <laughs> Said the Arctic Cat guy. <laughs> Hey, I, I, I'm as shocked as you are. I'm as, you, you're speechless. I am speechless today. <laughs> you should have wrote it. <laughs> yeah, why didn't you come? Okay. <laughs> hey, hey, Brock, you want to come riding with us yesterday? Oh, here, the wizard, <laughs> what? The wizard Oboz. How light does it feel? Does it pop out of the snow? How is it playful? How are the ergonomics? Yes. 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 Next question. <laughs> You've, you you touched on that. Does it pop out of the snow? It does. You know, it don't trench. Pops right on top. I, I felt like the 2.6 trenched a little bit getting going. Yeah. Heavier track. But I would never buy this sled with the 2.6 on it. I wouldn't either. I, would, I don't consider that a mountain track. I mean, you have a 3-inch that's 10 pounds lighter. Yeah. Yeah, 3-inch all day. Pops out, wizard. Yep. Wizard, wizard, oh, boss. <laughs> and yes, it's playful. Very playful. Like that, it's such a compact machine. Like, there's not... There's not three feet of snowmobile in front of me, and there's not six feet of snowmobile behind me. It's just I'm riding a track with a motor as small as they can make this package. It's got to yeah. be fun. The damn thing looks like a kangaroo yeah. going through the trees. <laughs> that's, that's what I'm going to name mine. The kangaroo the and kangaroo. I kangaroo. <laughs> well, <it's> so hoppy. <laughs> uh, what is the larger displacement engine going to be for 2025? Uh, can't get into that, but uh, will be. it will not be an 800. can say that. They were okay to say that. Uh, what does it sound like? <laughs> Perfect. Actually, I thought it sounded really cool. I don't know what it is, if it's, but it's got a pretty cool little. You can hear you can you can hear the air box a lot more. Is that what it is? Yeah, yeah. I thought that sounded Cause, really cause neat. Because the hood, you know, it it's still a lay down engine, so you're still drawing air on the front. Mm-hmm. So the air box pulls through the hood, feeds it into the front of the engine um, between the a arms, but the way that hood uh, comes together and fits into the airbox is different. Like it's, yeah. it's totally new design. And we didn't talk about that. But. No. Um, yeah. Well, the cool thing about the body, I mean, this is total sidebar, but the cool thing about the body work is you can take the all the plastic off with quarter turns. No hardware. No, you don't need it. Yeah, I, I, I read that in the manual. They no, said you've been saying over here. We should have asked you that. Yeah, I, I read that. How many pieces is the hood compared to last year's piece? The hoods, are, isn't the, I think the hoods are one piece, and then the side panels are separate. Or should piece, I say the and they all come off? They all so come the, off yeah, the there's the air box, and then that that can be separated from the hood. Yeah, I think it went from like twelve outside. pieces to five pieces or something. Yeah, something significant. But yeah, you can hear. Yeah, you can hear the cool. front end of the engine a lot more through the air box. Yeah, so it does have a it does have a unique sound. How much horsepower? Uh, this six hundred is in the one twenty five horsepower class. Um, and we don't have a dyno, so I can't really give you any numbers beside that but that is the uh that's the horsepower horsepower class of this 600 engine uh how capable is the machine we've covered that why no uh birdman underscore mt says why no turbo turbo is spelled t-e-r-b-o-w i'm not i'm not familiar with what turbo is so i I can't tell you why no turbo uh (laughs) Catalyst 600 compared to 2023 Alpha 800. It's not apples to al- apples, but it's all we got. We've covered that. Yeah. No comparison, uh, in my opinion. You guys got anything different to say on that? No. Uh, let's see. Will it be better than anything else with a bigger motor? Who knows? Yes. That, when, yes. when there's a bigger motor, we'll talk bigger motors. We'll, we'll figure that out then. But uh, how light does it feel compared to the Polaris and Skidoo? That's a good question. That's a good question. We're not on the snow with a Polaris and a Skidoo, so it's it's that's that that's something you have to rely on what you know in your head because you can't jump from one to the other yet. And we will in a month. We'll be able to. 
you know, we'll, we'll have these all back to back. So we'll be able to answer that question much better in a month. But, um, I, I'm going to go back to the first thing I said about this thing. When I was riding this through the trees and man, I, I did a pull and I, I just one handed this thing like bull rider <laughs> and just, I could stand there and just steer this thing purely with my lower body, just feet. And I was just hanging on loose enough, tight enough just to run the throttle and rode this thing um, across some terrain, climbing, side healing, and through trees. And like I said at the beginning of the show, this, my oh, my first impression of this thing is this might be the most naturally talented mountain platform I've ever been on. But it's a 600, so I don't know. And I feel like that's big coming from you because you've been, I, I, I mean, I'm not plugging this, but you've been a skidoo junkie. I feel like, I feel like you've, uh, you've talked about skidoo kind of that same way, which I've been on the skidoos lately a lot more in the last few years. And I feel like they're pretty playful, but I feel like this, this chassis is yeah, that I, much more. I, I like what works and I like what works with low effort. Yeah. And uh, man, the, when we were on the, the Patriot boost last week, it, you couldn't peel me off that Patriot boost with a, I noticed without <laughs> special. I mean, it, that thing was phenomenal. Um, it just, to me, yeah, the skidoo right now, the skidoo is probably the lowest effort sled to get on and go ride. Mm -hmm. There's probably guys that are more extreme riders that would argue with me on Polaris being that way. Right. And man, you put me on a Polaris and give me 20 minutes to sink my brain and my muscle memory back to that. Leave me on a Polaris for the rest of my life. I'll be totally happy. Yeah. Um, but yeah, the, the skidoo is, is probably the easiest feeling sled even though it's it, it rides light but it, it's heavier than a polaris yeah the polaris has a little more defined edge wider front end 36 versus the 34 on the expert um so there are some differences there but i i don't want to say too much on the catalyst because i don't want to i don't want to backtrack in a couple of years but when this thing has a bigger engine in it i'll be surprised if it's not like the best handling mountain sled out there yeah I don't know. You got anything? You gonna leave me hanging on that one? <laughs> you like, dug your hole. Yeah, I gotta. <laughs> I gotta own that one, huh? Uh, it's see. just impressive. I, I got a. I got a question. A serious question. And then I want Bruce to answer this question. So I'm a. I'm a. I'm an. I'm a diehard Arctic Cat guy. I get a new sled every couple of years. This is my year. I've been on the 800, you know, uh, Pro Climb Alpha for a year, maybe two years. It's time for me to get a new snowmobile. And I'm a mountain rider. Do I go ahead and, uh, you know, spring guarantee a 600? If 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 this is my year to get a new snowmobile, do I do I get a new 600? Well, let me throw a question back at you, because you've been on the 850s a lot, right? Do you like that power? I do. Yeah. So it'd be hard for me to say yes because if you spring checked a 600 and then next fall. You go with a bunch of 800s and you're getting beat. Like there's still that difference between the CC, the 600 to the 800, and then you add another 50 on the 850, you know. I don't know. I, I don't know how to tough, answer that. That's tough, huh? Because I just know how we ride. I mean, I've talked about getting a 600 on the way home yesterday. I said, man, I should sell a couple of my sleds and go <laughs> snow check one. But then you're like, man, or will I be disappointed? Not with the power. You know, 600 has a lot of power, but I'm going to want that extra. A lot of our, lot of our friends are, CC. are riding with 850 turbos right now. Yeah. So, I don't know. I just. I don't know. I what don't know what do you think? I don't know what I'd do. Mm. I, I don't know. It, it's a riot to ride. It's so fun to ride. It is fun. There might be that deep, deep day you want that horsepower and right. torque that comes from a bigger motor that you might, you know, maybe I shouldn't have got that, but. Buy two. <laughs> that's how, that, that's the easy answer. Buy two. Just buy two. Buy your wife the six hundred. Oh, okay. And you an eight fifty. Okay. okay. Best of both worlds. You could ride that six hundred every day of the winter <clears> and <throat> have a blast on it. There might be that deep, deep day that you're like, mm, maybe I should have got something a little bigger. Guess you have to poach the. Guess you have to poach a track on that deep, deep day. And you might hit some tree riding that the six hundred may not get you up. But like Rhett says, it's a fun sled to ride. Like you're not going to go ride big hills that day. You're going to go pound the creek bottoms and the you know what i mean yeah like it's it's a fun sled i i would probably say yeah you'd have fun 
but you'd have them a couple of days where you're like, I wish I had more power. There and there's people in the industry that that preach, you know, they're, they're a broken record of like, well, if everybody was on a 600, they'd all have more. Fun. Right. Yeah. That's that's my main. And question. Okay. Okay. Yeah. It's kind of like the turbo thing. Yeah, being right here. Yeah. Uh, but nobody wants to buy a 600. Right. Everybody out west wants a big motor or a turbo. Um, you can make the argument that yeah, everybody should be on 600s. You'd have more fun. There's probably a lot of truth to that. I will agree, but I, I won't. I won't do that. If I'm a consumer spending money. Um, I'm probably going to buy a, a bigger motor or a turbo, like, but I would be, and because I, I'm not brand loyal, I think brand loyal is a complete fallacy, uh, dirt bikes, mountain bikes, uh, anything outside of snowmobiling where I'm, I'm a consumer and not a media guy, uh, trucks, no such thing as brand loyalty. I just want whatever's the cool new thing and whatever looks to be the, the best performance. Like, like I just want the experience of something new and different. This might be the year where if I'm a snowmobiler buying a snowmobile, where, okay, I will buy that 600 instead of something else because I want to experience that. Yeah, right. I want that new sled. But so so if you're talking like, do I go buy a, a brand new Ascender, the 2023 Ascender, find something like that, or do I wait and snow check the, or spring check this 600, M600? Yeah, M600. For sure. Definitely. For sure. Overall, one sled, I... I don't know. I mean, it goes back to the same argument. You're probably going to be happier on a on a big turbo sled. I don't know. But I would not be unhappy if I were stuck on this thing all year. I think if you only have an Arctic Cat dealership in your hometown, <laughs> you buy it. I'd buy a Catalyst 600. Yeah. Before the 8. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Me too. Yeah. Me too. Thanks, guys. Uh, will it... Uh, Big Dal once as will it come in 146? Yes, you can get it in 146 with the 26 track, not the three inch though. Uh, but yeah, it is available. It will be available in 146. Uh, you can also get it in a 154 with both or either the 26 power claw or the three inch power claw. Uh, what is the honest weight? We don't know. Can't weigh it yet. Uh, what other questions we have here? Would the Catalyst be a real contender with a 900 in it? I don't know. I'll tell you when there's a bigger motor in it. <laughs> uh, how agile is it? Extremely. And it's just because it's such a compact, low CG, lightweight. I, I can't even say lightweight. So I was going to touch on this, though. We're saying all this stuff about a sled with electric start in it, and that's mind-blowing to me. Yeah, what, 20 pounds, 22 yeah. pounds? Uh, and we've been posting a lot of weight stuff on, on Instagram lately, you know, weight, wet weights, comparing sleds. And there's, there's a lot of people that are like, oh, weight doesn't matter. You can't feel anything less than 40 pounds. Bull crap. You can feel 10 pounds. You can feel 5 pounds. It just depends where it's at. Yeah. If it's centralized, yeah, you're not going to feel 30 pounds. But you take it, a suitcase can off and put a lightweight can mm-hmm. on, you feel it. But if it's anything out of the center line and you can't feel 5, 10 pound difference, I you need to go down to Colorado and you need to give Chris Moran a handful of cash and you need to go ride his lightweight build. Yeah. And then your your brain will think completely different about snowmobiling from that point on. Yeah. A Agreed. lightweight snowmobile does things that a normal heavy snowmobile cannot ever do. Um so that's why I'm I'm against electric start. Although the older I get, that was nice yesterday. <laughs> oh my gosh. <laughs> <laughs> the first time I got on I went to I pulled it and I didn't have the the kill switch up. So I pulled it once and then yeah. realized it, pulled the, the button up, and one of the cat guys was right next to me, and he, like, pushed my hand away and hit the button to start it. And I'm like, <laughs> okay. <laughs> yeah. Like the Skidoo guys I, I go with, mm-hmm. I actually start their sleds for them just so I can hit that button. <laughs> 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 but they never start mine. So. Uh, well, yeah, yeah. Anyway. I, I agree. No, I agree with what you're saying. It was nice to be able to turn it, but I, but I yes. forgot they had com- electric start on them. Because yeah. I was not feeling the weight. So I can't imagine what this thing's going to feel like 22 pounds lighter. Right. Uh, and maybe more than that after they get everything finalized. I don't know. Yeah. yeah. So that's that's a big caveat to throw in there. We didn't ride a non-electric start version. So all this crap we're saying about these is, mm-hmm. is electric start. Back up to the last question. Um, How agile is it? They asked if, if it's going to be good with a 900 motor or would it be good with a 900 or a 850 or 800 would the catalyst be a real <coughs> contender with a 900 in it i so guess i just started thinking you know sometimes they put 
a bigger motor or something bigger in the same chassis and it changes the handling mm -hmm. on on that same chassis so i, I mean it's, it's an interesting question you know you put a bigger motor in there motors do you know a bigger motor does way more than a smaller motor it might not be much but sometimes that rotating mass changes the handling characteristics Absolutely, yeah. of a snowmobile but i think the way they've designed this with the low center of gravity putting a bigger motor in there hopefully it it still has the same handling traits as what we have with this 600 so and, and I, you can take that question would the would the catalyst be a real contender with a 900 in it and you can kind of reword that and say uh is a higher horsepower catalyst going to be just a freaking amazing sled heck yeah it is yeah yeah it is and, yeah. and man it might be fun just to buy a 600 and see you know because everybody's going to come out with parts for this thing it's going to be pretty quick to market performance stuff for this right and you're going to get lighter because you're going to change out your silent your your can mm -hmm. so you're going to lose some weight right off the bat there and man you add 15 20 horse to this thing and it might be just a wicked weapon yeah it might be true. a lot of fun uh what else have we got I'm here excited to do a motor to brock buy one we'll do a motor swap or a turbo. <laughs> there you go. Let's put a hair dryer on it. <laughs> uh, got got some Polaris ambassadors on here asking some funny questions. Well, let's hear them. They're, are they uh, does are it they R rated? Is my red underwear going to match my green <laughs> underwear? Will, will it be delivered before Polaris 2023 snow checks? <laughs> <laughs> Good chance. That was actually a conversation we had. Like like. Uh, well, he asked us at lunch. Yeah. What can what can Arctic Cat do to get better? Deliver. Just deliver, yeah. And that was just, the one. Just deliver bef before, <clears throat> geez, before the before the year. snow hit. Remember, yeah. remember the one guy that was sitting us next to us. He's like, put it in your garage in September, so yep. guys can get excited when the first snow hits. They're not breaking their sled in with yeah. You got a new four, six feet of power. You got a new snowmobile in your garage in September, October. Or you got a new dirt bike in your garage in February, March. Like oh yeah, the excitement levels. You, you are just <laughs> getting <laughs> stoked, and you are spending crap on aftermarket parts, and you are buying like gear, are, everything. Your life better. better all if that thing's in your garage, your life revolves around that thing. Yeah. So I I agree. Deliver these things early. Get them out. Get them to your customers as early as possible. And obviously, COVID screwed that up, and blah blah blah. Supply chain. Uh, what else do we have? We have a couple left here. Price. Uh, no idea. No idea. We asked that. Um, they say they haven't gotten to that point where they're figuring that out, but I, I'm sure they're working on it. Um, they did make the comment that they want it to be competitive with other 600s, which is smart. I don't think they should go price this thing like an 850 or a 900 or a turbo. Um, keep it, keep it in, keep it priced within its class. And, yeah. um, I think they'll sell everything that they can build. Uh, they did make the point that they're going to be limited on what they can build just because of, again, supply, components, suppliers, uh, staff, staff at the, on the assembly plant. Like, a lot of factors limiting them on how many snowmobiles can be built. And that, that's kind of the same across the board. One last question here from Tanner Mike 527 uh, What elevation did you ride? We were at 75. Yeah, probably. 8,000. 8, 8, yep. Kind of where we do all, all of our testing. Power between. Power difference between this and previous 800, uh, and then steering is his last question. We covered the steering. We've covered the power, but again, uh, it's it's not uh, – horsepower is going to be a big difference, 25, 35 horse probably, but the efficiency with which that power is getting to the snow. Cuts that in half. Probably. Catalyst does this a lot better. Yeah. And the gap between this 600 and – the current model year 800 wasn't as big as I was expecting. Yeah, I agree. Like it was, did I say that right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Wasn't, yeah. 600, this little 600 in the uh, Catalyst was way more capable. In fact, I they were they were playing with different fuel mapping and uh, they had kind of their latest map and then they had one that they'd been working on and I lost track of which was which, but I came back off of one. I was like, man, this thing runs pretty good for an 800. They're like, no, that's still, that's still the six. That's still the six. I was like, dang it, I thought I caught you. <laughs> like, it rips. I'm not going to lie. It, it rips. Um, yeah. So go put your order in. I might. Get <laughs> two. I'm kind of excited. 
You it is, me, ex- it is exciting. Excited. Don't so, you go do one because they're going to be allocated probably to these dealers. So well, they won't be able to get one. <laughs> uh, I think it's going to be all spring order. I'll race you. The, the, they'll try to yeah. do, they want to get back to doing some dealer inventory, but I don't think they can build enough yet. Right. But I think it's a good year. Like you, you buy this 600, you'll be able to sell it next year. No problem. Because it'll be in demand still, even if they come out with a bigger engine. Um, it'll still be in demand. You'll still be able to ride it and then sell it and probably come out of it totally fine and then have a year on it. What everybody true. else says. And the other thing to keep in mind, like we're, we're talking snowmobiling is a $22,000 sport for a new sled, a new turbo. Right. If this thing comes in priced around current 600s, man, you can you can get into the sport for a reasonable price now. Save some money for aftermarket goodies. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, and your clothing. (laughs) Save some money for diesel fuel. (coughs) Yeah, fuel alone. Boy, need to get our prices back down. (laughs) Eggs and diesel. (laughs) Eggs and diesel. (laughs) All right, so so, uh, in in one sentence, summarize your experience on the Catalyst. Hmm. One sentence? Um, hops like a kangaroo. <laughs> that's that's your sentence. That's my new sentence. No, I I would say uh, very playful. Um, brand new sled, like just I uh, very playful. I'm gonna go two words: very playful, like lots of fun. Right. If I got a sentence, just that is. <clears throat> way more fun and it's exciting to ride a new chassis it's it's good to see Marta cat come out with something new and whether it's a 600 or 800 it's it's exciting to see a new chassis come come out and uh, it was it was fun way fun to ride all right okay brock oh wait sorry my bad you didn't ride <laughs> <laughs> i wasn't able to ride you weren't there i thought you were just but in the what trees. i did take away yeah what yeah what i did take away from this conversation <clears throat> is to get one like it's not it's not the same snowmobile that we're used to riding it is a different snowmobile and it's a good different yeah absolutely so well a great different if you're listening to harris yeah better better than expected that'd be my summary i like it better than expected like i i went into this thing like okay it's going to be better but it's going to be that much better right and it's it's a 600 so i got to temper my expectations there but man the power was better than expected handling was phenomenal like this is a balanced platform i've always felt like the alpha was unbalanced that was mm-hmm. its biggest problem it's just unbalanced it's a good sled right great power great track unbalanced yeah this thing is just oh it's it's good it's it, dialed, it goes back dialed. to that question where do they go from here in five years you know what i mean <laughs> yeah i mean you're gonna ask that all the time but yeah, yeah. i like that better than expected yeah better than expected okay all right thanks boys